Good afternoon, my name is Special Harvey, and this class is over for Burton Asmus. The task number for this class is 071, that's Charlie Oscar Mike, that's 1016. And the overall classification for this briefing is unclassified, and the overall risk assessment is low. However, comma, there are some things we need to talk about since there are always inherent risks in what we do. Number one, let me grab my risk assessment sheet here. Number one, uh, we are outside. So there could be contact with wildlife. If you do have any contact with wildlife, just back away. If you don't harm it, it won't harm you. However, if someone is hurt by an animal, we will take them to the nearest uh, health center. Uh, number two, adverse and changing weather. We have checked the weather and it doesn't look like it's gonna rain. Uh, but if it does and God decides to smite us or a tornado comes and destroys us all, we will go inside. We wanna stay safe. Uh, it is kind of warm outside today. We have just had chow, so we should all be full. I want you to drink water. Part of your PCCs for this class was to bring a full canteen. And at the end of this block of instruction, you'll overturn your, in your canteens and I expect them to be empty. Stay hydrate or dehydrate. Okay, and finally, cars near the training site. We are near kind of a parking lot, so stay away from the cars. We're off the pavement, so they shouldn't come and attack you. Uh, so just stay away from them and be cognizant of where you're at. Don't run into them, okay? Now, it is a green army, so the army's policy is reduce, reuse, and recycle. And finally, another administrative item is physical security. In the unlikely event that there is an active shooter here during this class, first you'll run, and then you'll hide, and if all else fails, then we fight, okay? Uh, and then we're gonna move on to our PCC items. I'm gonna go through and check each one of you individually to make sure you have each of these items and then I'll mark it down on my piece of paper that you have each of these items. So the first one is gonna be an ID card, then a canteen, then a pencil, then a paper, and then the map. Okay, so I'd go through and check everybody. Now the next is we're gonna go into the actual task. I'm gonna read you the task conditions and standards. The task is converting azimuths. The conditions, you are a member of a squad preparing to conduct tactical movement, and you have been directed to convert azimuths and preparation for the movement. You have been given a 1 to 50,000 military map with a declination diagram of pencil, paper, magnetic azimuth, and a grid azimuth. Some iterations of this task should be completed in mob four. Now, some side notes on that, we do not have a 1 to 50,000 map of this area. We do have a 1 to 25,000 map of this area. We will not be completing this in mob four. Now, uh, the standards, you're going to convert an azimuth to a back azimuth, magnetic azimuth to a grid azimuth, and a grid azimuth to a magnetic azimuth without error. And the task statements, no. The north and south lines designate the grid north on your map. The compass needle points to magnetic north. The grid magnetic, GM angle, uh, is the angle difference between grid north and magnetic north. Now, what is an azimuth? An azimuth. Uh, so in the army, the azimuths are the center line of direction. We're gonna use them to point at an object and then travel to that object. And then true north is the point of the earth that you're at in direction to the north pole. Uh, grid north on a map is are these blue lines here that point to the map's north. And we'll go into this a little bit more uh, as the class goes on. The magnetic north is the point on the Earth's planet where the shifting magnetic poles are pointing to. So the grid north, the magnetic north, and the true north are always going to be in a little bit different places, which is why converting azimuth is an important class. Now the performance steps, the first one, uh, is converting an azimuth to a back azimuth. But warning, when you are converting azimuth to back azimuth, extreme care should be exercised when adding or subtracting 180 degrees. A simple mathematical mistake could have disastrous consequences. Now why is that? So let's think, if we have an angle of 190 and we add 180 to that, we're gonna have something more than 360 degrees. There's only 360 degrees on a compass, so it doesn't make sense. So if it's more than 180, we're gonna subtract 180, so that way we can get something that's on the compass to help us shoot our back azimuth, okay? So the step one is to add 180 degrees if the azimuth is 180 degrees or less, and subtract 180 degrees if the azimuth is 180 degrees or more. 
And then uh, our next performance step is going to be converting magnetic azimuth to a grid azimuth. And no, to convert the magnetic azimuth to a grid azimuth, we're going to subtract that GM angle that we were talking about earlier. Now, uh, they want a really exercise warning here that you want to make sure that your calculations are correct, especially when converting uh, your back azimuth. Uh, when converting azimuth into back azimuth, extreme care should be exercised when adding or subtracting the 180 degrees. A simple mistake of one degree could be significant in the field. Now, step A is to locate the GM angle, which is part of the declination diagram at the bottom of our map. Uh, and this can all be found in figure uh, one of task 071 Oscar mike 1016 Now, no, the declination diagram shows both a graphic picture of the GM angle and provides a written summary of the GM angle. This written summary includes the date, the GM angle, and the actual angle I was written in both degrees and in mils. Now, if we look at this demonstration here that we have, it's gonna show the declination diagram, which can also be found at the bottom of your map. And so now, uh, to start off here, we need to figure out if the GM angle is gonna be an easterly angle or a westerly. And so we can uh, refer to that if the magnetic north angle is to the right of the true north angle, then it's gonna be an easterly GM angle. If it is to the left, then it's gonna be a westerly. So, then our next step, we need to apply our mathematical formula to convert a magnetic azimuth to a grid azimuth. And to do that, we add an easterly GM angle uh, to the magnetic azimuth to obtain a grid azimuth. And we need to subtract a westerly GM angle from a magnetic azimuth to obtain a grid azimuth. So if it was over here, we would subtract, let's say it's the same one as over here, so nine and a half. If it's to the left of the true north, we subtract nine and a half. If it's to the right, then we add nine and a half. Now, as an example, uh, given the magnetic azimuth of 190 degrees, of an easterly GM angle, we're gonna add 9.5 degrees. So the given azimuth is 190 degrees. We add our true angle, or our, excuse me, our easterly angle of our true north, and it's gonna give us 199.5 degrees. That's gonna be our new magnetic azimuth. Okay, so now moving on. We need to convert a grid azimuth to a magnetic azimuth. Now we need to locate the GM angle, which is part of the declination diagram, which again is at the bottom of your map. We'll just send it back. I thought my keys would get it. Okay. Uh, so the declination diagram again shows uh, shows everything about our map here. It's going to tell us how to find our azimuth, how to convert our GM angles into both degrees and in mils. Uh, for this example, we're not going to worry about the mils. We're only going to worry about degrees. Uh, so. We need to work on finding our grid azimuth to magnetic azimuth. And then we're going to convert. We've already done that, so we need to convert our magnetic azimuth to grid azimuth. Uh, step one is to subtract the easterly GM angle from a grid azimuth. Sorry, I keep making you go back here. Uh, subtracting an easterly GM angle from the grid azimuth to obtain a magnetic. So if we have our example from earlier, 199. Uh, 0.5 degrees of our magnetic azimuth to get our grid azimuth we need to subtract that nine and a half degrees so that way we can get back to the 190 uh, degrees of our grid azimuth okay and so that's going to be if it's an easterly if it's a westerly we're going to add the 9.5 degrees okay so now I'm going to give you five minutes to practice this task and then we're going to go back in and I'm going to re-explain their performance steps we're gonna go back in and explain uh, what you're gonna be graded on. And then we're gonna go into the evaluation phase. So take five minutes now to practice, okay? So then five minutes have passed. So welcome back. Uh, so now that you've had five minutes to practice, do you have any questions over this task at the current moment? Okay, so now we're gonna go into the evaluation. To start, uh, we need to go back through and say the task conditions and standards. So the task is converting azimuth. The condition uh, 
Uh, you are the member of the squad preparing to conduct tactical movement, and you've been directed to convert azimuths in preparation for that movement. You've been given a 1 to 50,000 military map and a declination diagram, pencil, paper, a magnetic azimuth, and a grid azimuth. Some of these iterations should be performed in Mop 4. However, we're not going to do that in Mop 4, and we don't have a 1 to 50,000. We have a 1 to 25,000. Okay. Now, let's go into your performance measures. So, to receive a go for this skill, you need to receive a go on all three of these performance measures. Number one is converting an azimuth into a back azimuth. Number two is converting a magnetic azimuth to a grid azimuth. And number three is converting a grid azimuth to a magnetic azimuth. Okay, so are there any questions before we begin? Okay, so begin. So and then as they're uh, conducting their test here, I'm gonna go and pick up the trash, because this is a green army. We reduce, we reuse, and we recycle. Okay. So the evaluation has been complete. Everyone has their pencils down and their tests in. So now we're gonna go back in and we're going to tell anyone that failed. So we have three out of four that have failed. I have passed because I'm the instructor. The three that have failed, the retest date is gonna be tomorrow at 0900 at this current location, which is the CTA next to the Rappel Tower. And the uniform is gonna be OCPs with a full canteen again, and you will have eaten chow, and you will have your ID card, your pencil, paper, a map, and the canteen, like I said earlier. Okay, so now, uh, we're gonna conduct a police call and we're gonna go back through our PCI. So we're gonna look for any trash just like I picked up my trash during the test. Okay, so now PCIs, I'm gonna go back through every single person that has taken this test. And we're gonna go back through and I'll check to make sure they still have their ID cards. Now an empty canteen, a pencil, a paper, and their map. Okay, so everyone has that. So now we're gonna move on to our AAR. Okay, grab that. So, what was supposed to happen? All right, I suppose, before we start, I wanna let you know that everyone has the right to speak. Uh, I wanna encourage maximum participation. Please don't talk over anybody and make sure that everyone feels safe and you know has warm and fuzzy feelings about sharing everything. We're, this is a safe environment, we're all part of the same army. Okay, now what was supposed to happen? We were supposed to have uh, the introduction of the class name. I was supposed to introduce myself. Uh, we were supposed to have the safety brief, the deliberate risk assessment, and I was supposed to tell you about the hazards, inform you of the Army's green policy, and of physical security. We then checked over the PCC items. I read you the task conditions and standards. I was supposed to introduce you to the terms associated in this class. And I was supposed to brief the scenario and give the soldiers their instructions. Uh, I gave you five minutes to practice. Uh, during the practice, uh, or we ended that, I restated your task conditions and standards, and I briefed the evaluation procedures. I read you the performance measures that you had to accomplish. Then we accomplished the exam. And then for the soldiers that failed, we have our retest date of tomorrow, which we stated in the uniform that I stated. Okay, we conducted a police call and our PCI items. Okay, and that was, supposed, that was what was supposed to happen. Okay, what actually happened? That actually happened, okay? And that was, what went right and what went wrong? What can we do better in the future? And what did we do right now? Okay, so now I'm gonna review our draw. So, during this class, we covered the hazards that we could have encountered during this class. Nobody got hurt, so I would say that our measures were implemented successfully. And everyone is safe and everyone is fine, okay? The overall risk assessment was low and everyone is still safe, okay? So now I'm gonna go over my paperwork real quick and make sure everything's filled out and make sure all the check marks are next to the PCI items. I'm gonna do that real quick.
Okay, so and then I would turn in this paperwork to DOD SAFE and at this time I would like to request to close the training site uh, pending any further questions and the class is dismissed.